Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to some more Hard Space Shipbreaker. Uh, we're going to continue. We, we're doing a little bit more like uh, split shifts, I suppose. I'm still going to keep these episodes around about the same length of time as a single ship anyway, uh, shift anyway. Probably, you know, that 15 to 20 minute mark. Uh, that's, it seems to work. You know, why don't we don't want to really rock the boat too hard. But um, what we're probably going to do is these sort of, I don't know what to call them, these like kidney bloody removal versions of the core, pulling it out the old back back sort of kidney slot. I don't know. <laughs> it seems, that makes sense to me. Um, and we're going to see if we can sort of empirically test this. Maybe get a, you know, two or three of those in and see... Uh, if we can do it without the uh, the core sparking, but the the sort of the working theory at the moment, my hypothesis that we're sort of trying to just trial by fire it, is that when we do cut that front plate off, the core seems to connect disconnect quite cleanly and at full HP, and it doesn't seem to spark. There seems to be an actually fairly long window before it sparks, so. That would be the test, is to sever the front end, um, come around the side and pull it straight out, basically. So we need to do it a couple more times to just find out if maybe we've just been lucky and it hasn't sparked, and, or, or maybe we're onto something. So, you know, the, the experimental bloody scientific process continues, I suppose. Um, equipment. Zero on my cutter. I have one repair kit. All right, we'll have to buy. Well, I mean, if we abandon the shift, does it count? I'm not sure. We'll buy. Uh, we'll buy some kits when we start. Now we should be able to tie this in with explosive decompression of the airlocks. We've already discovered for the main shell removal sort of concept that we've come up with that blowing out the two airlocks is actually kind of the way that we want to do it for the overall thing. Thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome, sir. Let's just hope that the airlocks themselves are cycled and closed. Which they are, so that's good. Alright, so we can... I'll bust an airlock. Oh, I was going to say, what's that sparking? It's the handles of the uh, airlocks. Okay, so that worked out quite well. So we've kind of established that burning out this wall is probably the geo. Actually, we'll go high because there's fuel lines underneath. Alright. Blowing out this door is probably the move. Alright. Jesus, that was loud, whatever it hit. Okay, we'll burn this out. I'll tell you what, can I just burn this fucking ladder? Yeah, fuck that ladder. It's a pain in the ass trying to move it around. And then, uh... As far as pulling this out, we were piss farting around with a lot of... Uh, like getting the bits off underneath. Oh! Oi! There we go. Look at that. That should be a clean bloody hole to pull it out of. Alright. That's what we're about. Alright. Yeah, see, it doesn't have its health bar. Interesting how it sort of warns you that, like, touch it at your own risk. Alright, here we go. Reactor meltdown sequence triggered. Urgent action required. That was quick. It hasn't sparked yet. It's pretty clean. Alright, now, the idea was I was going to empirically uh, 
crash the shift and start again, but to be perfectly honest, if that's the case, what we might even do is just start the shifts like this. You know what I mean? And use the rest of the shift to to pull the bloody ship apart, sort of thing. Okay, so so now we're at an interesting point. This is really interesting because um, if you recall, pretend we've skinned the shell away, right? This coolant actually becomes a bit of a problem, does it not? Well, does it? Does it do, do we really need to cut the entire ship in half or not? It's not really clear to me. I mean, I guess we will if we want to move it and potentially... You know what? Yeah, because we hypothetically would want to throw both the front and the back half of these central sections into the, uh, into the furnace, right? Because we want to actually get every little bit. Now, if I were to cut or melt any of this coolant line, it's going to pop, isn't it, right? So, we need to come up with a plan. Now that we've cleanly disconnected the coolant line, what's the best way to deal with this? I didn't check. Okay, yeah, it's all good. Right, so if I dis if I were to disconnect you and take all this coolant out of the equation. Jeez, that was a bit violent. No, no. Why is it the same button? See what happens if I drill that. My health's not doing so well, eh? Yeah, so the, the, the pickup button is the same button as the you know, force push button. So, what I was trying to sort of experiment on there, if you do sever the pipe further back up, it does actually seem to stop. Like, look at this. This pipe's well behaved. It seems to stop the, uh, the flow of the coolant. Oh, it destroyed the shipping crate. Right? That's basically, that pipe's empty. I can't hear anything on it with my hand on it. Hmm. Okay, that's good. That's worth knowing. Yes! Alright, cool. Um, let's get back to skinning the old ship. Right. Which the sort of... The go plan was this. Look at that showing that crack already. Hmm, before I'd even severed that.
Let me out. Yeah, so we might cut a little corner off of one of the front panels to get straight to get in. Oh, no, it depends. So we'll probably start at decompressing the airlocks, to be honest. At least for the time being. Alright, so here's the big test. One, two, three, four. Let's see what sort of damage that does, eh? I guess every little bit of weight helps. Um, yeah, we still don't have a perfect solution for this. Jeez, we haven't completed an objective in a long time. Really? Alright. So... Interestingly, there's a tiny little section there. Carter, you got five minutes left in this shift. Knock out that work order before they turn the lights out on you. Your pressure level decreasing. Don't you dare, I'm so close to death. Is that still going in, you reckon? Oh, it's been grabbed. Four tethers did the job. How about that? Perfect. Meanwhile, this is all bloody sparking because I'm a dickhead. Jeez, is this shit ever going to stop sparking? I can calm down. It just won't stop. Your oxygen reserves are low. Note that excess carbon dioxide. Oh, that one terminal, that seemed to calm it all down a bit. So it was sparking to like this equipment, but Hmm. Even though the box isn't technically, I suppose. Metal? Maybe it is. I kind of assumed it wouldn't be. Hmm. So at the very least, interestingly, that one cut, well, no, I mean, there was explosive decompression. Yeah, that's not going to work. 
because it's still attached to the ceiling. You know what, though? What if we were to cut some of this to go with it, maybe? Like if we did a cut there, but back. Oh, that's that's a stretch, isn't it? No, because that I was hoping that wall was in one section, but it's not. Like that's a separate part as well. Ah, no good. And then these fuse boxes. Okay, we don't really want to fuck with them. One minute left, Cutter. Time to start wrapping things up. We wrap. See, that one cut can take out two walls and an under part, right? Cut him and cut the diagonal one here. Any chance it all comes apart then? No, because it'll still be attached there at the top. I mean, that comes out. Uh, uh, maybe. Maybe that might be worth poking and prodding out a bit more as well. Hmm. Okay. But how good was that reactor pool? Again, we're gonna we're gonna open each episode with that. Um, and hopefully it stays clean, but that's probably the cleanest and fastest one we've done yet. But again, as we've been through, it could be anecdotal. You know, we could get it right a couple of times because we're getting better at the technique, but if things beyond our control, like, say, sparking immediately, still happens, then that sort of moots the whole point. Which would be a shame, but that's why we're doing the testing. So yeah, that cockpit, though, is still driving me bananas. Because, you know, I'd love, I'd love there to be a really good party trick do it a couple of cuts and then off you go. Um, another thing that occurs to me that I didn't really think about is we have the capacity to cut the actual shell that it's attached to. Like I'm spending a lot of time focusing on cutting all the joining points in the aluminium because the aluminium is low value. But at the end of the day, it, it might actually be easy to cut the shell around the sort of window or something like that. You, you know what I mean? We might be able to actually cut it away by cutting the uh, carbon sheets instead. That might actually turn out to be a bit of a cleaner cut situation. Hmm. Might have to think about that. Let me know if you guys have any ideas around that one, because that's a pain in the bum. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, team. That was a good episode. Thanks for joining me. Might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.